Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate Gaudete, or Rejoicing Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent. And we rejoice because the coming of the Savior is close. And our liturgy from this Sunday focuses much more on the imminent coming of of Christ. For the times, perhaps in the days that are past, we have failed to notice how Christ has been coming into our lives every day. Let's ask the Lord for the grace to notice. Let's bring our own weakness and lack of attention to God, asking for mercy. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You were seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the lily, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and will recompense, and the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame leap like deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Lord, Come, Lord and, and save, save us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and, and save, save us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and save, save us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. 
The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion, from age to age. Come, Come Lord, and, and save, save us. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient over it until it receives the early and the late rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble, brothers and sisters, against one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to behold? A reed shaken by the wind? Why then did you go out? To see a man dressed in soft robes? Behold, those who wear soft robes are in king's houses. Why then did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is, a, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who shall prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of woman, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Water is a scarce commodity in Southern Africa. You will remember just a few years ago, the threat of day zero when dams in the Western Cape ran almost dry. And many parts of our country, many people in our country, know how precious and essential water is. We can live Without electricity, we cannot live without water. In the letter of St. James, the metaphor of rain is given to us as a way of us understanding our waiting for the Christ. It is given to us as an image for Advent. In this season, each year, we remember that humanity waited through a long and dry and exhausting period for a new sign of life. And that sign was Jesus himself. 
For generations, people looked every day to the heavens for a sign that would mean God is coming. God is present. The whole of the Old Testament tells the story of a people who are waiting, a people who are thirsty, a people who want something more, a people that desire to have their God-shaped hole filled, a hole which was empty. Then one night, in a way that no one could have imagined, with no fanfare, a child is born into the world, and God is present. God's final reign of love was here. All that humanity had longed for, for centuries, was made manifest in the person of this child who is named Jesus. Now we should not pretend that in Advent we are somehow waiting to welcome Jesus into the world for the first time. Because Advent is much richer than that. It is a season in which we recall what it was like before he came, and hence the Old Testament keeps reminding us, and how much we need him to keep coming again and again into our world and our lives to quench our deepest thirsts. And that's perhaps one of the points of reflection or invitation for us today to first of all get in touch with what we are thirsting for. What is your deepest desire at this time? Is there perhaps, in other words, a God-shaped hole in you that you are feeling is empty at this time? The first reading and the gospel make it clear that when we never put down our tools, we should never put down our tools when the rain comes. We are told that as a result of being soaked in that rain, the love of God, we are called to do something with it. And so hence that first reading and the gospel refer to the lame and to blind and to deaf and to lepers and poor, and anyone who has been left for dead. And that's the second part of the Advent message, which is important. Because we can so easily be drawn into our contemporary culture that tells us that all we have to do is look after our own backyard. And we have seen in this country what looking after your own backyard has led to. So much decline, so much misery, and so much of a deficit. And so Advent reminds us that as we wait to welcome the Christ, we also have an obligation to all of God's creation, especially the people around us. If we welcome Christ, everyone is our backyard. The desert, that image that is so often used in Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, is supposed to bloom once we have welcomed the Christ. If we have encountered Christ, something is meant to grow from that, as does something from the earth when it has been soaked in rain. There should be no drought, and all God's people should be taken care of. We are invited to be generous to others if we really get what the coming of Christ means. Advent tells us that we ought to respond to this lavish love of God by being generous. Our generosity, our goodness, our love of others is the most powerful sign of God's presence among us. It's the most powerful sign that the Christ rules in our hearts and in our lives. And maybe that's the second invitation 
in these texts today. To ask ourselves, in this time of Advent, at this time in my own life, who might God be asking me to reach out to generously? Who might be in my backyard that I didn't think was in my backyard? Is there someone who at this time needs my help? Someone I can take care of? We call this Sunday Gaudete or Rejoicing Sunday. And even the color of the vestments change to rose to remind us that we are rejoicing. And the basis of our rejoicing is because the Lord is near, but also because we know God's love in Jesus. And we are being invited to respond to that love. We live that love when we are in touch with our own God-shaped whole and are willing to reach out to others in generosity, in companionship, and most especially in care. What will you do in these last days of Advent? Let's pray together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our generous response to God begins when we think beyond ourselves and make our prayers for those around us and our world. And so now we present them to the Lord. For Pope Francis and the Church throughout the world, that we will all be inspired and filled with a deep desire to continue proclaiming the fullness of life Christ offers to all people. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all who gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, that sharing the great generosity of the Lord in bread and wine would inspire us to share with all those who need help and care at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have lost heart or whose faith has grown weary that their ardor and love for Christ will be renewed as the world prepared to celebrate his birth at Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered on this Gaudate Sunday, that our Advent preparations will help each of us draw closer to God who loves us lavishly. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For the sick, the suffering, the homeless, and the hungry. For those who feel abandoned and excluded, that we may always recognize the Christ who lives in them and strive to welcome them and share life with them as the Lord has shared life generously with us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
let us pause to bring our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our needs known to you. And today we pray that you would generously answer them through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God forever. Let's do this water now. We can change the new person who's out to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of God's name. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That, when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the sun and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Butti our Bishop and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.